I'm telling you, if you can fix these common mistakes, your beats are gonna be so much better. What's good people, it's Ocean here. Welcome back to my channel, welcome to the video. In today's one, I'm gonna be talking about the three main common mistakes that I see music producers make with their beats and how to fix them and how to avoid them. This one is mainly for producers who are beginners that haven't been making beats for too long, they're just coming up. And these mistakes that I definitely made myself. Sometimes I even catch myself making these mistakes, but I fix them straight away. And sometimes when I'm doing beat critiques as well and I'm listening to them, I hear these mistakes and I think that if you can identify these mistakes and avoid them or even fix them, your beats will literally go from like here sounding really amateur, really like uh, to up here where now you're listening and you're like, yeah, this one has potential or this one's really good. So I'm going to be sharing with you those three common mistakes. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and join the family and hit that bell notification so every single time I post a video, you get a note, you won't miss another one. And also follow me on Instagram at podbyocean. With that being said, let's get into these common mistakes. Let's go. Ocean gang go drown. So the first common beginner mistake, and this is something I'm, I was definitely guilty of this in the beginning. Like I'd get in that creative vibe. I'd be feeling nice. I have many ideas in my head and I put down a melody. Then I add another second melody, then a third melody, fourth, fifth, sixth, even seventh melody. I put all these melodies together to try and make like this ultimate beat, this ultimate melody. And then I realized it just sounds way too much. It's super hard to follow. That's because I was overproducing. When making beats, you probably heard me say this a few times before in my videos, but I really believe that simplicity is key. Like keeping things simple is the best way to go. And I don't literally mean like, you create a melody and you have four notes in it and it's just going dum 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 for the whole entire track like it might work i'm not saying it won't work but what i really mean is instead of putting loads of things in the beat just keep on adding and adding instead strip back things and still make the beat sound as full as possible and getting the most out of your sounds when there's a lot of stuff going on like too much melodies too much drums it sounds too cluttered and just way too much going on it doesn't sound good I kind of think of it like this. If I have a melody, I'm kind of telling a story with it or I'm pulling the listener down one journey. But if I have like one, two, three, four core melodies, I'm trying to take them all in these directions. It becomes confusing, they don't know where to go. So I like to keep it a bit more simple so it's just easy to listen to. And put it this way, when an artist comes to jump on it, if there's too much going on, it's gonna be super difficult for them to try and spit some bars or sing on top of it. There's gonna be no room for them. Right, so right now I've got a sample pulled up. I've already created all the melodies. I got four different melodies going on. And honestly, there's no like rules to this. There's no, uh, you can only have four melodies or five melodies. If I put in six, it's overproduced. Like there's no rules to it. It's all up to you. But right now, this is how it sounds. Like it sounds okay right now, but in my opinion, it's just a bit too much going on. So instead of me like getting rid of melodies and deleting them completely, I'm just gonna structure it out in a way so there's some variation and it doesn't sound too cluttered. So I'm just gonna listen to them individually. So this is gonna be my core melody right here. So for the first part, I only want these two. I'm gonna get rid of these. That's gonna be like my beginning section. Then we can switch it up. And then for the next section, we can switch up a bit more. So now I don't have the melodies just stacked up on each other and playing at the same time. I've structured it in a way so now there's going to be some variation to it. And it's a, it sounds just a lot less cluttered and sounds a lot cleaner. But yeah, if you have like so many ideas going on, but you don't want to delete them completely, just structure it out in a way so there's some variation in it. 
Another big mistake that I see beginning producers doing, and honestly, this is a big issue because this one, you cannot really get past this one, and that is having a melody, but one of the notes is out of key. Honestly, this is like a media red card, instant disqualification, you're off the pitch. When you have a note that is off key in your melody, it really stands out, like it's hard to move past it. It really sticks out and it disrupts the whole flow, the whole harmony. And it's really important when you're making your melodies, the notes fit together, everything is in key. Now let's say you're a beginner, you've just started making beats, you don't really understand what, what is notes, what is in key, what's not. There are a few ways to develop this. The first way is, of course, using your ear, just listening and finding out what notes sound good together, what doesn't. I just try to figure it out that way, just by listening and, and realizing, yeah, this sounds good, let's put that together. And the second way is, of course, learning music theory. If you know music theory, then this won't be an issue. With music theory, it's almost like a science to it, like what notes fit together and why, what creates harmonies, what doesn't, how to create a happy feeling with major chords or a sad feeling with minor chords. Once you learn music theory, you kind of got like the structure, the game plan on how to create melodies, I guess. But those two things take time to develop. I'm still learning music theory. Like I'm, I'm not great at music theory yet, but I'm still learning it. But there are hacks that you can do to make sure that your melodies are in key. So let's say you're using a sample. You've found a sample online and you want to create counter melodies to it, but you don't know what key it's in. So you don't know what notes to play underneath it. You can literally download this free tool called Key Finder, drag that sample in there, run the batch analysis and it's gonna tell you what key it is in. So now you can literally go online and search for the scale of A and see all the notes that's in that scale. So now you know, only play those notes that are in the scale, don't play any notes outside of it. Otherwise it's not gonna be in tune with the sample. Another way is to use ghost notes. I've done a video on ghost notes before in one of my melody tutorials. So I'm gonna leave the eye up here somewhere where you can click and see how to set up ghost notes in Logic Pro X. And basically it's gonna provide you with a grid of notes within a single scale. So literally you'll be able to just pencil in your notes and only choose those notes that are in the scale and that's gonna ensure that everything is in key. And the third common mistake that I see beginner producers make is that their 808 is out of tune, it's out of key. It doesn't gel well with the melody. Now I kinda like the melody, the 808 being in tune is super important because if it's off, you can't skip it, you can just hear it clearly and it's just, it just doesn't sound good. Now in the beginning, I didn't really think about this too much. I thought that the 808 was just there to provide rhythm like the rest of the drums. Not realizing that in a way, it is actually like another melody as well to your beat. And because the 808 sound is in such low frequencies, it's kind of hard to distinguish, does this go with my melody or not? Like, I couldn't tell in the beginning. But yeah, the way to get over this is really finding what the root note of your 808 is. And then again, just making sure that the notes that you play are in the same scale as your melody. As I said before, because the 808 has like such low frequencies and it's hard to really distinguish what sound it is, I'll play my 808s up a few octaves. If you see my other videos, you see that I play my 808s and a few octaves up, play the keys and hear what sounds good. Make sure that it goes with my melody. If it's all good, then I move it back down a few octaves. There is a way to find the root note of your 808 within Logic Pro X. So right now, I'm just gonna pull up like a random 808 from this Young Chop drum kit that I'm pretty sure I got from freejumpkits.net ages ago. I'm just gonna play. So all these 808s are like in different keys. So I'm just gonna drag this random one in here. And then the way to find the root note is to go to audio effects, go down to metering and tuner. And if I play the sample now, I can see that it's in E. So let's say I was to play on my keyboard C, it's actually gonna be mapped out to E. But the way how I do my 808s in Logic Pro X, it auto tunes it, so I don't have to worry about that. And the way I do that is by using the Alchemy plugin. So I literally just hit File, Initialize, Preset, hit Saw, Import Audio. And I'm just gonna drag this in here and hit Sampler and Import. Now I'm pressing the C on my keyboard and on the tuner it tells me C as well. So it's kind of just auto-tuned it for me properly and it's mapped it out perfectly on my keyboard. So I don't have to worry about that now. If I press the C, it's gonna hit the C. If you don't like using the Alchemy plugin to do your 808s in Logic Pro X, you can also use the EX24 sampler. So I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna hit edit and I'm gonna drag in that 808 sample. Now when I press C, I'm pretty sure it's playing E like last time in the tuner. I was playing F. So now if I want to map it out properly, I need to go into the sampler and turn down the tune a bit. Or up. So 
So I'm literally just pressing the C key on my MIDI keyboard. And I'm dragging things down a few semitones. So now I'm pressing C. And the note that's playing is C. So now it's mapped out perfectly. So yeah, that's my three common mistakes on how to fix them, how to solve them. I hope it helps you beginner producers who are just getting started so you don't make these mistakes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. That's about it for this one. I hope it helped and I'll see you in the future.